Our scripture is found in Mark chapter 13, beginning with verse 32. It says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest come and suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. And that's what I want to talk about, watching. Because we will rise Again, if you're saved, in other words, you're saved from your sins while you're living, you're saved from the death of hell when you die, and that is because you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died, and that He rose, and that He lives. And he got all power in his hand. Then we say you're saved. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So what that means is that there shall be a resurrection for all those that believe that Jesus is Lord. That means that all that are in the grave will come forth. Now, that doesn't mean some, but all. The Lord taught that there shall be only one general physical resurrection. Not like the movie Left Behind when uh, uh, resurrection here and a resurrection there, judgment here, just no, 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 no. Lord taught only one general physical resurrection. And that judgment that we keep hearing about, the judgment of the, at the great white throne, guess what? None of us believers will be there. That'll be only for the unbelievers. The, the rest of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, we, we're judged while we're here on earth. That's why we got tears, that's why we got sorrow. That's why we got a heartache, headache, pain, suffering. Because the Lord is dealing with us, disciplining us while we're here. Not punishing us. A punishment means to have something put on you that you can never get off of. You a mark put on you that you can never get off. For instance, when the Lord punished Adam and mankind, we would have to work by the sweat of our brows the rest of our days. Now, since we said that, the heavenly meaning for punishment means a mark that God puts on you that nobody can get off. Is that mark still on a man that he has to work by the sweat of his brow? I say yes. What about that the mark and punishment put on a woman that she shall have suffering and childbearing? And now, I don't care how much epidurum she takes, if she don't take it, that pain is still there in labor. But what God does for his children, for all the believers in Christ Jesus, he disciplines us, thank God, like a perfect father would. But there is a day coming that there shall be one general physical resurrection. 
And when they come forth in that resurrection, great, big, and small, some are going to come forth unto life. And some are going to come forth unto damnation. Eyes bulging out, lips blistering, and gone from being in hell to the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. The difference in the resurrection is not that there's two different times or two different stages, but it's the condition in which you come forth. In other words, do you come forth unto eternal life? Or do you come forth unto eternal damnation? There is just this one hour, this one time, that those that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. There will only be one physical resurrection. I don't care how many movies you've seen about, and cartoons you've seen about, they're going to be different in various resurrections. No, just one physical resurrection. The first resurrection is not a physical resurrection, but it is a resurrection of souls, of spirits, of those who have died in the Lord, you know, died as the saints of God. John gives the Christian view of death to comfort the saints. Jesus says, if a man believes on me, he shall never die. This means that when the death of this physical life comes, it will not mean death as it is for the unbeliever. Mm -mm. Won't mean death like that. In death, the Christian experiences the benefits of resurrection. Of resurrection. Christians live twice, but die once. Unbelievers die twice, but live once. In other words, as, as a Christian, you see, you see me right now, you hear me talking, I'm living. But when I close these eyes in death, I'll wake up immediately, alive, present with the Lord. So the Christians live twice. The second, we just eternal livers, eternal beings. That's why we call beings. We will be, we will be, we will be beings somewhere in heaven with our Father, or in hell with your Father, Beelzebub, Satan. The unbeliever dies twice. He lives once, but dies twice. In other words, you see him living right now, but he'll die, and then he'll be thrown as a second death into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Christian dies once and lives twice. Dies one time when they will have his funeral when he's been living maybe 40 years, 60 years, 75 years, 84 years, lives then, but he, when he closes his eyes for that sleep in death, he'll wake up to everlasting life with our Father. The Christian lives twice. So then, question, here's a question. How much of you is saved this morning? How much of you is saved? Well, your soul has been redeemed, but your bodies have not. This is what Paul meant in Romans 7. Paul said, my flesh, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. No, our bodies won't be redeemed until it is resurrected, in other words. But until then, we're going to be wrestling with this sin nature all of these days on this earth. 
Again, the saints have two resurrections, yet they only die once. The unbeliever lives once but dies twice. When we have Christ, death can never be substance for us. It's just a shadow. And when we have light, that is, Jesus is our light, the shadows flee away. So then as I close, why tremble in horror at death? Why be afraid of death? Especially if you are a Christian. We can sing with the psalmist. Yes, I'll rise again. Death can't keep me in the ground. And we can sing with the songwriter. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God.